Spyro the Dragon is a 3D platformer released for the PlayStation back in 1998. You control the little dragon Spyro on a quest to free your fellow fire breathers and ultimately defeat Nasty Nork, who made them that way. I remember playing the demo for this game on the disc that came packaged with my original PlayStation and finding it cute, but it didn't exactly match my gaming tastes as a 15-year-old teenager. Laura Croft and Solid Snake were far more appealing. Spyro starts off feeling a bit overwhelming, with a huge world to explore, along with a bunch of gates you can fly through to reach other levels. After wandering around for a bit and learning the ropes, you figure out this initial level is a hub of sorts, and the gates take you to levels specific to this world. Both the hub world and the different levels have specific items for you to collect before you can open up the next hub world. The first items are gems. In each hub world is a hot air balloon that can whisk you away to the next hub world, but the pilot requires you collect a certain amount of gems before giving you a lift. Next, you need to free the 80 dragons that have been turned into statues by Nasty Nork. Lastly, you need to collect 12 dragon eggs that have been stolen by some blue thief. Spyro the Dragon is a really open game. You can skip around the levels and the hub worlds all you want. The inventory screen is what keeps everything together. After making my way to the third hub world, I started getting a feel for how the game was laid out. I realized I had missed some dragons on the first hub, so I made my way back and replayed a couple of the levels and found what I had missed on the first attempt. Again, at first Spyro is overwhelming, but after getting a feel for the game, it feels very logical and structured. The level design is very good, encouraging exploration while also giving a clear path to the finish. I had a lot of fun running around these levels trying to figure out how to reach hard to find gems and discovering where dragon statues might be hiding. Spyro supports analog control with a DualShock controller, however, mine doesn't work. Surprisingly, the D-pad is more than adequate at maneuvering the little dragon through 3D space. The jumping is great as well, and landing on small platforms is easy. Spyro can also glide, which is essential in the later levels. To get the maximum glide, you need to press the jump button a second time as Spyro reaches the high point of his leap. If you don't time it perfect, you'll find you often just miss a platform and have to do it all over again. It's a little wonky, but doesn't ruin the enjoyment. The levels are designed with the gliding in mind and feature plenty of elevation changes requiring plenty of long leaps. The combat is straightforward, with a charge attack for flameproof enemies and a fire breathing attack for everything else. And that's pretty much it. Spyro is a simple game. Spyro the Dragon looks terrific and has a great whimsical fantasy atmosphere. Spyro himself is animated nicely and all the polygon models look great. The environments themselves are well textured and the draw distances are pretty vast. Spyro the Dragon does a good job of making the environments feel sprawling without being daunting or too repetitive. Spyro's music is also very atmospheric and helps set the fantasy mood. There isn't anything catchy here, but it's the kind of music that enhances the gaming experience without drawing a lot of attention to itself. This is a pretty easy game and a nice diversion to the tougher shmups and 2D platformers I've been reviewing lately. The bosses are the worst offender as they don't feel like bosses at all. They offer little challenge, but I guess they fit the overall theme of the game. The fun from Spyro the Dragon doesn't come from challenging gameplay, but rather from exploring the worlds the developers created. I don't usually like collect-a-thon styled platformers, but with just three different items to collect in this, it's not that big of a deal. The way the levels progress and the choose your own adventure style gameplay makes collecting these items enjoyable rather than annoying. That really sums up Spyro the Dragon for me. The level design, controls, music, and graphics all complement each other perfectly and create a really fun platforming experience. If you enjoy laid-back 3D platforming that is a touch childish, you really can't do much better than Spyro the Dragon. 4 out of 5. <laughs>